Hi and welcome. Um, in this video I want to discuss how to read Friedrich D. E. Schleiermacher. Um, so this is a follow-up to my previous video wherein I discussed, um, tried to uh, explain in five minutes some of the points of Schleiermacher's theology, um, mostly to dispel a few of the myths about Schleiermacher, but also to give a bit of a constructive um, out, uh, insight into who Schleiermacher was and what he um, was a proponent of in his theology. Uh, this video is the follow-up to that. Um, the point of those videos is always kind of to be to um, encourage you to go to original sources and read them for yourself. And so the same is true for this video. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about Schleiermacher, the works he's written, and then some of the secondary literature on him as well. So the primary thing I want to talk about actually in this video is his his masterpiece, which is Christian Faith. Um, this is the edition that I recommend you pick up. Um, it's the two-volume edition. It's the two-volume critical edition, um, and it is just excellent. The translation work is great. The notes are are really great. Um, it's a very scholarly and very um, reputable uh, translation of it. There's an earlier translation of Christian Faith. Um, that it's still good, and if you can find that version, that's not bad. But I, I highly recommend this one a little bit more. Now, as far as reading Christian faith, it is such a um, dense and systematic work that um, reading it is actually a big challenge. It is a difficult book to get through, um, but it's honestly one of my favorite works of dogmatics. It's a it's an incredibly profound um, systematic theology. Uh, there's a lot of just brilliant stuff that Schleiermacher does, but it takes a lot of extra work to understand some of his points, especially the way he presents them, um, and we touched on that some in, in my previous video about Schleiermacher, especially the way that he organized the dogmatics, um, where I stressed in that video that the, the later doctrines that he presents, especially that Christ is our Redeemer, that God is love, and that God is triune, those are actually the foundation of the dogmatics, but that doesn't come into, into, um, into full view until you've gone through the entire work, um, which is quite difficult for somebody to ask. So it requires an exceptional amount of patience to actually read through the text. So there are a couple ways I, I can suggest to you for how to actually tackle uh, Christian faith. Um, two of them involve um, reading the book twice. Now I know that's a bit to swallow, but with a book as dense as this one, um, so tightly packed and so brilliantly interwoven, um, you really just have to read it twice. You just have to accept that. Um, in order to fully understand it, you just have to read it a few times. And the mo main reason is because it is so dense. And so two ways to do that. Um, there's three parts to the book. There's the introduction, uh, part one, and part two. I recommend just skipping the first two parts and just going to part two, because this is really the heart of Schleiermacher's dogmatics, and I think it's good to keep this center, uh, front and center in your mind as you go back and then read the introduction and part one. Um, and so that approach has a lot of benefits. Um, that's one way to do it. So you can do it that way, and then the second time you read it, just read it straight through from beginning to end, because then what you'll have is you'll have a bigger overview of Schleiermacher's argument, and then you can re really get back and take your time with some of the more difficult points without feeling the need to um, always try to figure out every single part of them. Um, the second way you can do it is read it straight through and just read it straight through twice um, in the normal fashion. Now I would recommend for that that you kind of skim slash slightly um, go through the introduction and the part and part one, mostly because I think um, you can get bogged down in some of the details there, but it's good to quickly get to part two and some of the more important important doctrines there. Now that's actually the exact same way I would recommend you reading it if you only want to read the work once, because I, I of course understand um, that the text is quite difficult, um, but if you're only going to read it once, I do suggest at least taking a look at part two and maybe skimming through some of the sections. Read the um, fairly short um, section on God is love, on the doctrine that God is love. Uh, read some of the sections of, the, of Schleiermacher's Christology in there. Just kind of explore a little bit there, and then go back and read the introduction, again recognizing that the true heart of, of it is going to be towards the end. And so that's kind of my recommendation for how to read Christian Faith. Um, like I said, it's a beautiful work, and the only way to really read it is just to do the work and read it, um, but it is well worth the effort. Schleiermacher is just a great theologian, and it, this is truly one of the best works of modern theology um, that's ever been written. It's, it's really breathtaking. So, highly recommend it. Um, pursuing that path, um, but don't feel daunted by it at the same time, um, because it, it is quite poetic in some sense, in a strange way, um, and devotional um, in another sense as well. So, great book, very, very um, 
good to read. Now, alongside that, it's super important that you get to this book. This is a little book called On the Globenschleier. Globenschleier, I think I'm saying that correctly. Um, my German's not great, uh, but it means the doctrine of faith. So this was kind of um, Schleiermacher's term for his dogmatics. And so in this, he kind of actually explains a lot of the thought process that went into writing his Christian faith. Um, and so there's really just essential, essential stuff in here that you just have to get to if you really want to understand Christian faith. So this one's a must read, especially in tandem to the dogmatics. Um, another approach, I really think it's important to read Schleiermacher's sermons. So this text kind of compiles some of his sermons. These are some of his best. Um, there's a few other uh, books that have done the same, but this one's really good. Um, so Servant of the Word. So Schleiermacher was known mostly as a preacher in his lifetime, um, and so I think it's important to read his sermons. Another good book, um, a little bit shorter, just kind of a very, very, very condensed book, um, Christian or Christmas Eve Celebration and Dialogue. Um, kind of interesting. It's hard to pin down Schleiermacher's voice precisely. I talk about it some in my book, but... Um, Still worth checking out. Good book. Now, in terms of one of the misunderstandings about Schleiermacher is his doctrine of the Trinity. Um, some people say that he just doesn't even have one or that he kind of considers it non-essential to dogmatics. And that's actually the opposite is true. It's, it's the capstone or the foundation of his entire theology. And this book, of um, among others, shows that extremely well. So this is Schleiermacher's essay on the Trinity, um, the full title of which is extremely long, but he basically works through the Sibelius doctrine of the Trinity, of the Sibelian doctrine of the Trinity, so the, the um, church, church heretic uh, Sibelius. And he has a really fascinating approach to him that uh, follows the line of his non-speculative approach that I talked about. And so this one is extremely recommended or extremely great and important. It's actually the follow-up of his of his uh, um, conclusion to his Christian faith, which was the doctrine of the Trinity for him. And so this is a follow-up to that, and it's really great. So definitely good, especially if you're interested in his doctrine of the Trinity. Now, of course, one of his other famous books is On Religion. Um, I, I recommend reading this one, of course. It's, it is very good. Um, but remember that this is a very early Schleiermacher. It's not the culmination of his theology, nor is it really even properly a purely theological text. It's a bit more accurate to call it the um, an attempt towards what we now would call a philosophy of religion. Um, and in that sense, he was a pioneering, it's a pioneer, pioneering work. So it is really good, but it's important to remember that it's not necessarily the mature Schleiermacher in here, even though there's a lot of really good stuff in it. Um, and for this, I recommend Terence Tick's translation. There's a few others, but, but his is is great. Um, Terence Tick is just an excellent scholar on Schleiermacher, and I can recommend just about every one of his books without any reservation. So, Terence Tick version. Um, there's a ton of other really interesting books that Schleiermacher has written. You could read his semi-autobatic biographical stuff. You could read um, his Dialectics, which is a philosophical text, which is quite fascinating. Um, but this one's the only other one I'd really truly recommend, besides just following some other interests in Schleiermacher, and that is, it's a brief outline of theology as a field of study. Now, this is a pioneering work that really established kind of the outline of what theology is as a discipline, and outlines what the discipline in, in this, the field of study of theology. And so it, there's a lot of really good stuff in here. It's a little bit condensed and hard to understand, but this this translation, this edition, um, is great. Terrence Tick, again, um, did this, and his notes are really helpful and, and excellent. So those are the primary works that I recommend. Um, other than that, um, getting into secondary works, this is a good biography about Schleiermacher. I think biographies are always super important for theologians to understand their context. So, Schleiermacher, Life and Thought, Martin Redeker, I think is how you say that. Um, just a really good book. A lot of good stuff on his theology in here as well, um, but a lot about his, his personal life. A really short book and easy to read is B.A. Garish's Schleiermacher and the Beginnings of Modern Theology. Super short. There's a few things in there that I'm not as much of a fan of, but still a great introduction and, and really easy to read. Now, this is really good too. C.W. Christian. Friedrich Schleiermacher. Um, this is helpful in dispelling some of those myths I talked about earlier. Um, but this is a good book. Just a, It's a little bit of an um, older book, but, but very good as well. Um, now, per the question of Bart and Schleiermacher, which I get into some of my book, uh, this is a very good book. Uh, Bart and Schleiermacher Beyond the Impasse. Um, and so it, it, all the essays are just around that theme of the Bardian reading of Schleiermacher and how to go past that. Um, and then ultimately to see if there's any sort of synthesis between the two. 
Um, finally, this is probably one of the best one-stop books for Schleiermacher, and that is just the uh, Schleiermacher titled um, Parents Tick. Very, very good book. Um, yeah, just as far as a one-stop shop book, this one's great. It's fairly short, but really dense, and he does a great job of actually defining some of the terms Schleiermacher uses, which is super helpful. Now, actually, my, my favorite book on Schleiermacher, my secondary uh, favorite secondary book on Schleiermacher, is this book by Robert Williams. It's called Schleiermacher the Theologian, The Construction of the Doctrine of God. And so this is really where he gets to um, the doctrine of God in Schleiermacher, um, a bit of phenomenology. So I talked about some of those things in my previous video, and this is really the source of a lot of them. I really think this is a great book. Um, really, it's a little bit of an older book, but I, I really like this one a lot. So this is really good for that. Um, and then, of course, I recommend my own book. Can't can't not recommend my own book. I, I put a lot of work into it. I think it does a lot to, it goes a long way to kind of overcome some of the Bardian misunderstandings of Schleiermacher, because that's my immediate context, my immediate background, is somebody who kind of came into theology with a uh, interest in Karl Barth and his theology and kind of that world. And so I kind of begin with that, but I don't only begin with that. I, I do, I think... Um, it's successful in the attempt of just kind of getting to the heart of Schleiermacher's theology. Um, so, of course, I recommend my own. But if you liked the five-minute video I did, you may like this as well, just because the Schleiermacher literature, literature can be quite dense and specialized focused, uh, specialty focused. But this, I've tried to do it in a very amateurist sense, not in the sense of being poor or lazy, but in the sense of just being somebody who's a non-professional. I'm not an academic in the professional sense. Um, and so I'm trying to write as just an everyman for everyman. Um, so, recommend that. So, with that said, um, I hope you really do take the plunge and try to reach Schleiermacher for yourself. I think he's super important um, to know. I think he's one of the more, most significant modern, modern theologians. I think next to Bart, he's probably one of the most important um, in terms of pure theology. Um, he's really great. So, I really like his work. Hope this video was helpful. Um, I will leave a description comment, or I will leave all of these books in the description so you can read, look through those. I will also... Um, Put some in there that I didn't talk about here that I think are good because um, there's a lot that's on Schleiermacher. So with that said, thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great day.